Uh, well, hello. We're here. We're here. <laughs> hello. Welcome. To, hello. Welcome to the Women Conquer Business Show. I'm Jen McFarland, joined by Shelly Carney. And this week, we're going to talk about how content marketing supports your business goals. So if you've ever been curious about content marketing, if you want to know what it is, I suggest listening to last week's show where we broke down all the 101. This week, we're going to talk specifically about how you take business goals that you have and then support that through the content that you write, share, and what you talk about. So if you wonder how what it means, like what to say, how you say it, and how often to say it, you are in the right place. That's right. Because we do it so, all the time. We do it all the time. We never stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I'm I'm told I stop when I sleep, but I'm not sure. <laughs> I have no proof. <laughs> So what is up? You, I, we're both going on the road. We are traveling. It's a traveling time time of year. Uh, so, of course, for Mother's Day, Happy Mother's Day! I'm going to go visit my mom in Arizona. I'm leaving tonight, leaving on a jet plane, <laughs> uh, so I can go visit her. And I've got all kinds of books and audiobooks and games on my tablet to share with her because she's still in the rehab center um, after her stroke, still learning how to use the left side of her body. So I'm sure. trying to think of ways to entertain her while she has, you know, she loves certain games um, on the computer and on, on, she'll play them on the tablet. So if I, you know, we can kind of force her to try to use her her left hand to play the games, then uh, maybe that'll be a little bit more fun for her than just exercises. So that's absolutely, my plan for the week. <laughs> that's great. Oh, how fun. You know, I, you know, and I will be in a yurt on the Oregon coast. I'm very excited and a little apprehensive. The weather here today in Portland is icky. Mm. And that means it's probably ickier on the coast. <laughs> so I will be with my two two dogs and my husband. It's also the first time in, I don't know, forever that I've been away from my computer for that long. So it's kind of an interesting thing. I'm a little, yeah. little nervous about it. Um, Are you taking your time, phone though? I will have my phone. Well, at the go. same time, <laughs> I... <laughs> At the same time, I'm very excited about it. I think yeah. it's really phenomenal to be away and, it, you know, it's it's going to be fun. I'm, I'm glad I want that focus time. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So we're both on the road. We're both doing stuff. And what is next? Do we have any breaking news? I don't know. Let's see if we I have any breaking news. <laughs> We were supposed to have somebody helping us with our music, but um, I think Toby took <laughs> Toby took a break. <laughs> so just pretend. Okay. So 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 speaking. Hey, so you had that dream that we were going to be mad at him about the roadcaster. So he wanted to make his dreams come true. Oh my gosh, that is so funny. So, uh, um, so next week, as I said, I will be in a yurt. There is no Wi-Fi there. Is there That's any heat of... there in the yurt? Is there heat? I think. I don't so. want to think of you freezing in there. Um, I don't think there's a kitchen though. We stayed in a year once mm. that had a kitchen and a bathroom and it was really nice. And then everyone we've been in since is like, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> there's electricity. Um, yeah. but then the shower and everything is, is, is away. So it is like camping, but it's not like being on the ground. So that's really yeah. nice, but there's no Wi-Fi there. And that, this is the downside of having a streaming live show that we don't have mm -hmm. episodes in the can That's so right. if people are gone like we have to find a solution so That's next right. week i am not going to run home from the coast to record the women conquer business podcast unless she's and freezing to death when I'm freezing to death. <laughs> it's just like i'm going home <laughs> um, but what will happen is next week and it's a perfect week for this to happen next week shelly and toby will be taking it over for the week and talking about DIY home studio if you want to do video to support your business. So this is part of your content 
content marketing plan if you want to create videos that look good and you don't really know where to begin. That will be next week's show. And guess what? This is what Shelby, Shelly and Toby, Shelby, I just made up a new, <laughs> I People gave you a new name. <laughs> this is what Shelly and Toby do on their show all the time. So this is a really good episode next week for you to tune into, to learn more about how to set up your home studio. I will not be there. And they have my blessing to talk about this and help you work through these types of issues. So that's what's going on next week. I will not be live casting from a yurt on the Oregon coast. That's right. <laughs> and she has invited me and Toby to do the show. Toby was like, are you sure? Because I don't want to be mansplaining to women. And and we're like, it's okay. You're an, it's you're okay. a guest. You're an invited that's guest. Right. You're an that's invited right. guest. So uh, in other news, there's also um, there's also some really great things going on out in the world. There's so many shifts in the breaking news segment. So um, the first one is there's a new Google SEO course available, um, SEO certification course. Most of their certification courses are free. I think it's hitting the news and it's not any good. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it not any good? <laughs> wah, wah. <laughs> what don't you so like about it? It is, well, there's actually articles. So it focuses on some of the wrong things that are not accurate or current. Mm. Things like keyword density, um, number of mm. words, things like that. Um, as always, uh, if you are weird, a... because isn't Google like the, shouldn't they be the SEO masters? <laughs> yes, <laughs> they should be. And they're not. <laughs> so oh. um, I don't know. I don't know if it's, I, I, I don't know, but um, hmm. we have an article. We'll put this in the show notes and it breaks down all of the things about it that are kind of behind the times or, or not accurate. So mm -hmm. um, what I will say is what I continue to say for small business owners out there, it the answer really is that the best SEO is answering customer questions. You know, look up your topics, find out the questions that people are asking. There's actually a whole section when you type in a search term into Google that is like questions people ask. <laughs> Like these That's are true. good questions to be answering mm -hmm. and talk about them. Like you would talk to your customer, like you would share when you were asked the same question. This is a much better approach for how to handle things like search um, and building out your content, which is one of the things we're going to be talking out today, talking about today. That's a much better approach than um, investing in a course, um, especially if you're not planning to become an, an, an SEO um, or like a professional in the field. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Well, thanks for being here. JN in the wood. Yeah. Yeah. It says, uh, yeah. Um, has to go back to work. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being here. And uh, the other, and we'll put this link in the, I'll put it in the chat um, about, about SEO and the mm -hmm. SEO course so that um, people can see that as well. Um, so um, the next piece is that TikTok has stores and not all of the information that's being shared between the channel and the, the channel store <laughs> that you might be seeing on TikTok. Not all of that is consent-based. They're harvesting information and serving things up to you. Um, you know, it's, it's just another example of TikTok and their privacy policy taking advantage of users. Um, this kind of thing happens a lot. We, we've seen similar things in with Facebook. We've seen it you know, with other platforms as well, it's really just something to be aware of and um, understanding that that there seems to be a lot of gray areas in the privacy policy with TikTok in particular that just are not there for some of the other companies. So just an awareness um, on the breaking news side. Mm -hmm. What do you have for breaking news, Shelley? Um... Well, <laughs> when we, when Jen and I get back from our traveling, we are putting together a uh, 
some ideas to create a membership. So uh, if you have some input that you'd like to share with us about what you'd like to see in a content creator type of a membership group, uh, we're going to be building it as we go. So <laughs> we are open to all the input of what you want to see in that group. Uh, so that's all the breaking news that I have. That's awesome. Just contact yes. us, uh, leave a comment on our videos, or go to the website, Women Conquer Biz, and go to the contact page and leave a message. Um, there's lots of ways to reach out to us. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So let's get started with today's topic. You betcha. Uh, how some content training. Marketing. We got some training some to do. Oh, <laughs> Toby was on it this time. <laughs> So, so just so you understand why there's a little delay here. <laughs> <laughs> Our producer is in another place. <laughs> yes. All three of us are in different places right now. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, this is an interesting thing. This is like a sidebar about content marketing and your goals. In the, It's so interesting to me in the She Podcast group, and I've seen it in other marketing groups and, and places. A lot of people worry about the best tools for doing this like we're using Streamyard; it's working great the podcast sounds great you know everything is coming together i think a lot of times people worry too much about tools so in mm -hmm. in she podcast a lot of people are asking now about what to use instead of zoom uh zoom is a fine tool for this <laughs> you know you can still use it and a lot mm -hmm. of people are always jumping onto new things so we're going to go through how content marketing connects to your business goals, but be aware that everybody's always going to have different opinions about the tools. And as we go through the tools next week and in the, in, in the coming weeks, just understand that um, we've done a lot of research on this and we have a lot of ideas around what those tools are. And going into things like Facebook groups isn't necessarily the best place to go find that information. That's true. That's true. And to be, you know, very blunt, every tool out there will work. It's more about what are you comfortable with? So I can tell you, you need this, 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 and this, but if you get those things and you're not comfortable using them, uh, then it's not going to work for you. Yeah. So, you know, take everything with a grain of salt and, and kind of investigate it before <laughs> you invest in it. Absolutely. And it was funny because somebody was asking me, I, I gave a training last week about, you know, the top five digital marketing essentials out there for small business. And the question came of which, which email marketing platform is the best. And my answer might surprise you, Shelly, in that I said, it's the one that you use. That's right. What's the best email marketing platform? The one you use. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's the best podcast interview platform? The one that you use. Yeah. The <laughs> one that you're used to because then you don't have that friction yeah, of having to learn something new. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So let's let's get into the topic, uh, mm -hmm. how content marketing connects to your business goals. Shelly, you want to kick us off? All right. Well, first you have to know what your business goals are. For most of us, it's making money. Uh, but for content entrepreneurs, a lot of times it's growing your audience so that you can make money. Um, and the it goes hand in hand, right? Uh, growing your audience means that you're likely to have more prospects within that growing audience who are interested in buying from you. And the more you can connect with that audience, the more loyal they become, the more likely they are to trust you enough to spend money with you. So goals can be something like growing my audience to the point where it becomes a um, minimum viable audience, where it starts to grow on its own without me really having to work hard at it so much anymore. And that sometimes takes about 18 months, unless you are lucky enough to go viral. Absolutely. You know, and it's funny, one of the things I talked about last week is that I'm in this ghost creator program. And in that first week, there were all of these resources that we were going through. And it, I read one of the articles, I don't think I texted you <laughs> about it. But I was like, Oh, that's uh, wah, wah. And it was <laughs> like, it was like the first 100 blog posts are practice. And, and it's you know, funny, because 
the time you think they're gems but if you yeah. look back after you get into like number 150 and you look at number three and you're like oh my god oh. let's get rid of that Ew. so <laughs> so i think that one of your business goals has always got to be keep going yes keep connecting with people keep doing it be consistent and yes. also understand that it always is a work in progress it's always something that's going to get better mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and i think that a lot of people give up way too quickly because they don't see instant progress and the same is true if your primary focus isn't being a content creator like we are if it's more like i want to grow my business well you still need a following of some sort so that you have meaning like email subscribers, people on social media, on different platforms, so that you have people to talk to and to sell more of your products to. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the goals around content marketing are around like, how do I communicate? What is it that I'm communicating? How is it, how many products do I want to sell? Am I asking people what they want? <laughs> and then finding a way to deliver it. That's right. That's right. And um, I I took a course, a mini course, a couple of years ago called my Your First 100 Leads. And the point of that was to sell your free stuff first. So if you have a free download that you want to offer so that you can bring in those leads, you have to use that same marketing uh, message to get people to opt in for that as you would if you were trying to sell something because mm -hmm. there's still an exchange. They're still giving you their time, their attention, and their email address in exchange for this. So you are still selling that free product in order to build your first 100 leads. And that's a great goal. Absolutely. It is about customer trust. Like you're, you are, it is, you know, when you are, and that's the same thing that goes back to like the TikTok ads and the stores, you know, when people are sourcing things without consent, you're breaking down customer trust. So it's the same thing if you want to put a freebie up on your website to get subscribers or you want to offer something even on like a YouTube channel or through social, however it is that you're doing and whatever it is, make sure that it's worth it. You know, people guard their email addresses much more carefully these days. <laughs> and the quickest way to uns unsubscribe, Bill, is if your freebie is just not what you said it was. Yeah. If, if they don't deem it worth their worth worth anything, then they're going to unsubscribe. Yeah. <laughs> You're not what I wanted. <laughs> Yeah, so the thread here for uh, those of you who are kind of like you're all over the place or whatever is you need to have some business goals and those goals need to be tied to some services or some products, even if they're not developed yet. And then each of those products and services and the goal, you need to have an idea of what it is that you're going to create that aligns with each and helps you drive traffic and people to the products and services that are in support of your goals. Yes. So what are your goals? What are your business goals? Um, write them down and make them tangible, you know, uh, something you can hold on to with some numbers and some deadlines, you know, uh, by in six months, I will have this many videos up and my, you know, my channel will be at this level and my, you know, get those goals. And even if you don't hit those goals, at least you have something you're shooting for so that you can yeah. focus on where you're going. Absolutely. Yeah. So this is the first step. Like in and you might be like, well, this sounds a lot like planning. There is some planning that goes into That's this. Right. <laughs> you have to be aligned in all this. And and by writing this stuff down and creating goals around it, you can then see the progress. You know, and I would encourage you to consider goals that are reasonable. <laughs> so it can't be like, I, I'm gonna have a million people in my audience. I mean, that might be a great long-term goal. But if you're starting from zero or from a, a smaller number, you're definitely going to want to give yourself uh, mile, milestones along the way so that you can feel like you're achieving something. Like it, it's, it's really important because, again, I think we've talked about this before, content marketing is the long game. So you want to 
have things along the way that you can celebrate. I think mm -hmm. celebration and reflection are really important in this process. That's true. That's true. Cause it's going to keep you going when, um, uh, you you know, instead of looking at the big, oh, I'm not at a million yet. Oh, I'm not at a thousand <laughs> yet. And instead of being sad about that, you can say, you know, look at all these great comments I got on last week's video. You know, I changed somebody's yeah. life. You can't, you cannot, uh, have a better goal than that. <laughs> There's nothing yeah. better than having improved somebody's day and then change their life. Absolutely. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. And that's usually the, the goal for anything. I think, I don't know. I always go, go into things like that. Like if I can just change one person's mind about something, yeah you know, the, the that's, that's <laughs> click well funnels. worth it, you know, about, I was, I was going to say click funnels and then I was like, man, have I, haven't I harped on that enough? So, um, but yeah, oh, that's so, you know, it's funny. Um, so you might be asking yourself, okay, so you've talked about goals before. Now we're like aligning goals. We're listing out the goals and how we're going to talk about it, the different ways we're going to deliver and speak to our products. Um, how can content marketing help me achieve each of these goals? Mm -hmm. Well, of course, uh, if your goal, your, you tie your goals to your content marketing. So I'm going to, content marketing is something you have control over. The actual achieving of the goal may not be. So you might say, well, I want to get 26 <laughs> downloads or more each week on my podcast. That may not be something you have a lot of control over, but you have control over putting out a podcast every week and having it be very uh, topical for your target audience. And when you do that and you keep an eye on your analytics and really try to adjust according to what does the best, what what gets the most downloads, then you will eventually get to that 26 downloads a week uh, marker that tells you you are in the top half of all podcasts out there. So uh, that's a great thing to shoot for. Um, but again, Focus on what you have control over and then keep an eye on your analytics to see where you're going. Absolutely. And if you're like, well, you know, how do I, how do I even know if I'm talking about the right things, if I'm not getting the eyeballs or, you know, people listening to my show, you know, eyeballs on videos, people listening to your podcast, um, nobody's reading my blog. I can't even draw flies on my social media. <laughs> You know, and I would say we've all been there at different stages of our businesses. And the best thing to do is to really start asking questions, like find out what it is that people want to learn more about. And you can ask your existing customers, you can ask the internet. <laughs> you know, there are a lot of, you know, there's places like Quora, there are places like social media where you can just start asking questions. A place that I like to mine for information is, you know, if you get a lot of feedback, you know, customer reviews, things like that, they're telling you what they like about what you do. And these are also in their own words. And these are also opportunities that, that you can use to say, oh, well, I can talk about that more. And these are things that you can be doing to achieve those goals. It is hard sometimes, unless you have a storefront and you can be asking people, how did you find me? Or if you have a specific product, sometimes it can be really hard to close the loop on how exactly content marketing is helping you achieve those goals. Um, but just know that if you write a lot of posts, for example, on Facebook, or if you, um, or LinkedIn, something like that, or if you're creating videos and you're starting to see more and more comments, as long as you're including links back to your products and services, <laughs> probably a lot of people are accessing what it is that you have to offer um, because they're they're looking at or listening to what it is that you're producing. Yeah, uh, Toby and I lately have been talking a lot about how we help people to publish their book. So if they have written a book and they've got it edited and they're just like, how do I get it? up online? How do I uh, publish it on Amazon? What do I do? I don't even know what to do. I don't have a place to start. We talk to those people. We say, this is something we can do. This is something we can help you and teach you. And uh, we'll talk about it during our show. Like yesterday, we talked about proposals and we talked about giving a proposal out 
based on this. And lately, we have been getting a lot of people, a lot of people writing to us. I have a book. I want to publish my book. How can I work with you? So just keep talking about what it is that you do for people and people will hear you and they'll say, oh, I need that. And they'll start reaching out. And that's when you can see, oh, obviously my content marketing is actually working here. People are reaching back. So mm -hmm. uh, just keep making offers. And if that offer isn't getting any, f any feedback, anybody uh, taking it, then it's not quite right yet. Keep tweaking that offer. Yeah. And it's valid when, if people are like, I don't, if, if anybody ever says, I don't really understand <laughs> what you're talking about, that's a good clue. Cause that, that happens. And, and I'll be really honest with you that, you know, I work in nerdville of marketing most of the time, you know, I'm in marketing operations, I'm doing integrations, researching software, coming up with ideas around how to construct things. And when I first started my business, I had no earthly idea how to talk about these things in a way that was fun, exciting, or that didn't scare people away because a lot of people don't like talking about technical things. <laughs> so it, it, can, it can take a while to hit the right notes and to find the right people and to get people to come back, you know, and to understand. And I'll be honest with you, for me, having a podcast was really great because it gave me an opportunity to practice talking about what I did, to track, even though the numbers were really, really small, just track what people were listening to, getting feedback around what people liked. Sometimes content marketing can help you practice your presentation skills. It can help you do so many different things, help you practice talking about things in a different way, it can help you be more attractive to potential customers, help you get subscribers, help you in so many immeasurable ways that that's another reason why it can be hard, <laughs> you know, to like close the loop on the way that content marketing can, can yield success on your goals. When I talk to a lot of small business owners about this, it is important that they are consistent in their messaging, meaning your website, your email, your social media, your podcasting, your blogging, like all of these things need to be cohesive. They need to be consistent about how you're communicating about what you do and sharing it with people over and over again because they begin to understand the narrative. It's part of telling that story. Do you do you kind of agree with with that approach? Yeah, I just I'm kind of laughing at myself because <laughs> you know, I had a, two or three different photographs that I was using for avatars on different sites, and I finally said, you know, I need to have the same photo on every site, mm -hmm. uh, even though it's both they're all me. I need to have the same one so that it's just immediately. Oh, that's her and she does this and and have that same message no matter what channel you look at whether it's my blog my podcast my uh youtube channel whatever it is uh or any one of my youtube channels <laughs> we can see <laughs> that it's the same person and she's still talking about content marketing and she still has this system that she adheres to and this domino belief of you know live streaming is the best way to build an online community that buys from you and that's my message right and that's yeah everything you know that's me in a nutshell mm -hmm. uh so yeah it has to be consistent or people are like is that the same per is she what is she doing is she doing this or that you know <laughs> yeah right to be consistent yeah you know and and for me the consistency is around being that solid, trusted advisor that helps guide you through the marketing forest. And I think that for me, <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm just picturing the two, the woodsman with the Snow White, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, um, and, and it's kind of funny, you know, it got really solidified for me after after I was contacted about that documentary about click funnels, you know, like when, and they brought me in to talk about just that thing, you know, to help make sense of things and help do that. And I was like, wait, this is, 
this is what I've wanted all along. Like, <laughs> you know, and it was like crazy, but it was the fact nice. that when you kind of do it and do it and do it and you practice, like I finally hit something with that one blog post. Um, but I've done it before where I've had other posts that get picked up by mm -hmm. big publications and things like that. And you kind of realize that, you know, cause I'm a blogger. I really like blogging. That's, that's what I like to do more than live streaming. No, and podcasting, no offense, everybody. Um, because I just love to write and I acknowledge that I'm not everybody loves to write. <laughs> So you need to do what you love doing the most and then practice and get that aligned message. You know, what it, what it, what you say and how you say it really matters. And then over time, that is what leads people to understand what you do, how you help people and closes the loop for people where they decide to engage from you. They can learn something from you, whether it's how to write a book or how to do a live stream or, or, you know, how to make sense of your marketing <laughs> when nothing else seems to make sense when there's just so much information out there, mm -hmm. whatever your message is, it's important to talk about it more than one time. You know, one of the mistakes I think a lot of people make is they just keep jumping from thing to thing to thing. And people are like, well, I don't even know where your expertise are, what it is that you do. It's true because they join you uh, in progress, right? They don't join you on day one. They join you where you're at, when you're at, when they, you know, they find you and maybe you're on page 10 and they're still on page one. They're like, wait, wait, who are you? What are you doing? <laughs> I need to hear it again. Yeah. But it's, it's great practice. And, and just remember that as long as you make clear what that thread is, so people can pick it up wherever they are and, and go, that might be the most important piece of the puzzle, you know? And, and when you think about, your business, your services, the content you create, who this audience is that you want to have around you, you have to look at what it is that you're offering and make sure that it's clear to the audience how those things are all connected. You don't have to share your business goals with other people, but remember how we said, you know, take your products and services and how you're going to talk about them and then you have to look at how you're going to talk about them and make sure that it's clear to people outside of your organization what that thread is, what those connection points are, so that they'll be more inclined to follow you along the way. Yeah, and they'll know if they fit with you or not. Uh, you know, if you <laughs> tune into a, a marketing show and they're throwing a whole bunch of jargon that you do not understand, you don't fit. You're just like, I, I, I don't even know what that is. And, you yeah. know, I'm, I'm a beginner apparently. So let me go back to square one with somebody who's talking to beginners and you need to know where yeah. you fit in and you find that out by the person uh, who's marketing. What's their message <laughs> and, and at what level are they at? Yeah. And I think that not always, but sometimes the mistake that business owners make is they join somebody midstream and they are talking about something much more advanced than where you're, you might be. And you just pick up on like the high points and you start going with them without really realizing that they're in a different place. It, yeah. it, I see it a lot. And that's how I, how people end up with things like click funnels at the wrong phase of their business, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, and, and that's, that's one of the things. And thankfully, I think that this is starting to shift. I think that, you know, at least I hope it is that, that as, as we progress and as people are buying more things online, you start to realize there are lots and lots of different ways that people can put the pieces together and make sales and communicate and bring people in. And what we're really seeing I think, and I think you're going to agree with me on this, Shelly, are more and more people being creators and realizing that creating content gets you more attention <laughs> and gets you to people quicker. So there is space um, for doing that. Yeah. Oh, my, my son has been looking for a job for, for 
quite a while now and I keep encouraging him to create content online. Uh, make sure your LinkedIn profile is, is showing that you are doing things because people are looking for people who are productive, who are self-starters, who, uh, hey, you know, hire me or don't, but I'm making content and I'm doing stuff, you know? Uh, yeah. And, and I think that is where we're at today. If, if you want to be noticed as somebody who has, you know, a lot of value to offer, then you should be getting content out into the world. You need to be offering it. Now, that doesn't mean you have to do it like us. It looks different for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, but if you want to be a creator, then it means meaning you want to create content primarily for your business as a driver to products and services, then it does mean um, being consistent about your messaging <laughs> and showing showing up again and again and and doing things that encourage people to engage with you through the content that you're creating. That's right. That's right. And meet them where they're at. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, you know, for me, I go around and I speak to business owners in the first five years of their business. Mm. That's like the core. I mm. travel all around the state of Oregon and do that. I, I'm looking at starting my own events um, in support of Epiphany courses where people can come and engage with me. Um, it, you know, it, it, these are the bread and butter people that I talk to. <laughs> so yeah. I am working on creating content now that is really consistent with what the questions I'm getting again and again with um, the message that I want to repeat, how I want to share what marketing looks like for people in the first few years of their business. And I need to do that consistently. And it's the same for anybody out there who is looking to create something. This isn't you create it and, and share it once. It's like you create it, you consistently support it, share it with people and then beyond that oh email your list about it which um now we're both doing so <laughs> i can say that without sounding like i don't actually do what i say well yeah you <laughs> so, tell an, you know, people um, enough times to do something then you decide you better do it yourself <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so uh so yeah you need to like repeat the message mm -hmm. consistently and then talk about like all these different areas of expertise that you have. Um, and this is where I come back to, you know, thought leaders practice that really breaks down these different ways that you can share your expertise. And then the next, I can't remember what the next book was. And I don't even know if you can find it. I think they offered it as an ebook for a while. It was excellent. And it's about these pink sheets. So you can come up with like 50 things that you can talk about on the fly and then you just break them down into these little cards that make it easy for you to just be like, oh yeah, I can just talk about this now, <laughs> you know, but it's all related and consistent with what your areas of expertise are. And it's a really powerful tool because sometimes you forget uh, what it is that you have to offer. I, I don't know how many content creators and business owners think that they don't have a broad base of topics that they can be talking about. Well, if you feel that way, then you haven't uh, done enough live streaming <laughs> because you have to come up with stuff sometimes, you know, you're like, uh, and, and, and Jen hands it off to me. And what do you think, Shelly? And I have to come up with something and just like, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> what was that? Was that, which cartoon was it? It was like, Watch me pull a rabbit out of my hat again. <laughs> Rocky and Bullwinkle. Rocky and Bullwinkle. I mean, that that is that is basically the the bonus of doing podcasts and live streams. You know, I think it's less so with a blog. I think people stress about blogs way more than if you just talk off the cuff. And I've done enough speaking now that I actually prefer some of that talking off the cuff where people are just answering asking me questions in the middle of something mm -hmm. and those hot seats you know and and certainly that's not for everybody i'm sure there are people who are freaking out about the very idea of hot seating putting themselves yeah. in a hot seat moment but it helps it helps you talk to customers it helps you be clear about 
what you provide, about your expertise, if you can, it helps you sell, actually, <laughs> if you're used to being put on the spot and not answer and answer questions, it helps you in these sales conversations that you're having with people, because you're used to answering questions on, on the fly, you're used to coming up with things, you become more solid in your expertise. And you and, start uh, looking for stories to tell. You start, oh, well, you know, this happened this week. Let me pull that in and create a story out of it that connects with what I'm talking about. And you, the more you do that, the better you get at it. And the more interesting it is to your audience because they can relate to your story. They could say, oh, yeah, I spent a week with my mom and that happened to me. And, oh, I get that. And, you know, that storytelling is a really important part of our marketing because uh, people are hardwired to listen to stories. If you start a story, people are like <gasps> leaning in, yeah. tell me a story. I want to hear the beginning, the <laughs> middle, and the end. And I want to know how that ties into what, you know, you're going to say next. Yeah. It's amazing. It is amazing. And I'll say that yesterday I had the pleasure of sitting in on presentations for a local uh, incubator. And there were a couple of businesses in there that I had worked with previously through the Prosper Portland Inclusive Business Resource Network. And I was just so proud of them. And these are people that are, their marketing has gone just gangbusters and their business has gone gangbusters. And I was sitting there and one of them called me out and thanked me in the middle of the presentation. And I was like, whoa, that was so neat, you know, and it's feedback. <laughs> I was, I was, you know, and I, it's just such an honor to like work with businesses and you don't always hear or see the feedback. You know, I can't mm -hmm. go back and revisit everybody and see these amazing victories. And, and yet it was just, it was just amazing. It's like, here I am. I've been like that program. I've been working with that program now for four years. We have helped over 120 businesses in that time. And everybody meets with us and then everybody goes their own way. <laughs> and I really, you know, and, and it was that exact moment of like, I have been telling people the same thing <laughs> for four years with this program, <laughs> you know, and then I was sitting there watching what they had done with that information. Now, certainly they've gotten other advice. They've done all the hard work, but sitting there and seeing the fruits of the parts that I had been talking to people about and seeing it come into fruition, I was so happy for them. I was just happy for them. And then gratified that I could be even just this tiny piece of their journey. And it was validating in a way to see that message <laughs> that I have been sharing that sometimes I just feel like I am shouting into the abyss <laughs> that yeah. somebody saw it and is listening and is doing it. And I think that sometimes when you are creating content and sharing it, and helping people connect things to their own business goals that sometimes it's really hard. It's really hard to keep shouting into the abyss, but it's really important that you keep at it and you keep doing it because you're always helping people and you may not always get that validation of what it is that you're doing, but I was, I did. And it was just amazing to see firsthand. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. And that's why we write books. So we can put all our knowledge in there and not have to say it 50 times. That's why we make right. videos. Same thing. We can say it once and then say, oh, go watch this video because it ex addresses that exact thing, you know, but we still have to keep uh, saying the same things over and over because we need to be consistent. We need people to know we really believe that and we really do that. We do what yeah. we say we do, you know? Yeah. It's also why you start uh, a business course business exactly <laughs> yeah and a membership so, and a membership <laughs> like that's why you start these things is so that's that right you can begin to send people to places and say you know i i break this down in a lot more detail here and it gives it gives people the opportunity to engage with you on, on that level 
Yes. So hopefully we've given you a pretty good idea of how to support your business goals with content marketing. And we would like to invite you to go to the Women Conquer Business website. That would be a great place to subscribe and get updates about what it is that um, I'm up to, get uh, get connected with our podcast in a different way, all different kinds of things. And Shelly, you've been talking about the book. How do people create content and put it in book form? Uh, so there's many ways. This particular way is each week we created a uh, a presentation that was all within one theme. And then when all the presentations have been completed after about uh, four or five months, we put it all together and put it in a book so that you can get the book. And once you have the book, you can get the free downloads, which give you checklists. You can watch the videos uh, of the presentations that went into the book. So you have all these different ways of learning that will, you know, be one of those is going to hit you right so that you can, you know, really understand it well. Um, and we also, in this book, tell how to write a book like this. So Livecast Life, you can find at book.livecast.life and uh, get your own copy. And uh, again, it's got free downloads. There's videos that go with it. So it's a pretty cool way to learn how to do live casting. Live casting is live stream videos that turn into podcasts that you then transcribe and turn into blogs so that your content uh, creation is streamlined and consistent. And you see yes. the link on the it's screen. Typing. It's very hard for me to <laughs> type and talk. I've learned. Yeah, uh, it is for everybody. <laughs> you can also visit the Women Conquer Business website. It's been scrolling That's on right. the bottom, but it's womenconquerbiz.com. And feel free to peruse. There's like a hundred podcast episodes and another hundred blog posts, which apparently were all practice according to the ghost <laughs> creator program, which is very difficult. It's still very difficult for me to accept, but, um, but I will say more recent posts are cooler than last than the earlier ones. Yeah. Uh, that's how so I feel about mine too. They're always getting better and better. <laughs> They're always getting better. So what are your tweaks of the week? Tweaks of the week. Let's see. <laughs> so you, I mentioned it, yeah, that Toby and I yesterday, we talked about putting out proposals. So if you want to make more money in your business, make more offers. And an easy way to do that is with proposals. Toby and I found a great product on AppSumo called Proposa. And uh, basically you plug in things into this proposal template and it looks like a beautiful website uh, and we created a proposal last week for somebody who wanted to, us to help her publish her book and you know we created a 3d mock-up of what her book could look like oh, wow. and we talked about you know what it would be like to hold a book in her hands and then we shared the books that we have uh, published and you know that we and then we gave her an idea of here's what we need from you. Here's what we'll do for you. Here's the price. If you're happy with this sign here. And mm -hmm. all of that was super easy to put together because of the templates provided in Proposa, which we got through AppSumo. So I highly recommend it. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah. I, I need to look at that. I've done, I go off and on proposal software mm -hmm. and I think right now I'm back to doing um, Word docs. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to see a run through, we um, actually do show it on the screen. We do like a little tutorial, we'll click here, click here, do this, do that. So you can watch the video on messages and methods and see all of the little tutorial stuff if you're interested in learning more about it. Yeah, yeah I might look at that. Uh, you know, we'll see. You're looking at a bunch of stuff on AppSumo right now. It's very exciting. Like, <laughs> because of you and, and all of these things, <laughs> you know, and, and my tweak of the week before we get to your second tweak of the week okay um is that i'm continuing to refine my own marketing tech stack you know i make recommendations all the time i have a page on my website around favorite tools um and i realized that i didn't have i hadn't really been refining my own core tech stack you know so i made a huge change that i've talked about before which was migrating my website to ghost 
And then I was like, how do I get rid of some of these zaps? Like, so I use a program mm-hmm. called Zapier mm-hmm. for integrations. I think a lot of people use that. Alternatives to Zapier would be like Integromat and there's something now called Pabli. There's like a handful of different tools that say, um, if this happens in, in this program, then I want that to happen somewhere Triggers, else. yeah. Mm-hmm. Just, for, yeah, different triggers. You know, they're mm-hmm. kind of, think of them as, as if then statements, you know, if yeah, this, then that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And there's a whole, there's actually like an, if this, then that, um, mm-hmm. app <laughs> that will do the same thing. <laughs> um, so, uh, I was realizing that I have, and, and, and Zapier works well, PySync works well, but <laughs> the problem is if the zap fails, then it can like trigger like a whole bunch of bad things happening, you know, that you have to rebuild and stuff. So mm-hmm. I have been, actively trying to reduce the number of third party integrations into things. Mm-hmm. And this morning I installed something called Outpost onto my ghost website, which is the autoresponder, which means that I think this is like huge breaking news. I think I'm going to go off of active campaign now because it manages members. It does auto responding. <laughs> it onboards people. If someone unsubscribes, it asks, you know, especially for like a paid subscription it'll ask like give them an offer if they to come back like Mm -hmm. it's pretty dynamic and so I guess that that I mean that's my tweak of the week that's a pretty big tweak and I think that the lesson learned for all of you listening is these things need refinement so Shelly and Toby are looking at different tools I'm looking at different tools some of these tools can be very fundamental that needs to be done with care but if things aren't working, <laughs> if you're maybe not using tools because they're actually not working for you, it's okay to make some of these tweaks and changes because they can really improve your business and really help you get to where it is that you want to be. And you might think, but I'm really tied in here and then it would take a lot to redo. When you do it a second time with a different program, it goes faster than the first time yeah. because you already have it in your brain how things work and uh, you can easily shift it over. And I know with Jen, she was on the ghost platform for a month with, the, with where they would help her to shift mm-hmm. everything over with her. Uh, so there's- Oh, they migrated my website for yeah, me. I, I have like 200 pages. Like, oh my God, how would I- <laughs> yeah. A lot of places much. will do that. So if you, you know, do want to make the change, don't be afraid of that migration process. Yeah. Yeah. And if you need help with figuring all of that out, that's the work that I do. I help people with these types of things, making those shifts, making the decision about those shifts and maximizing their tools to their fullest potential. So please, please feel free to reach out about that. Yeah. So, okay. Full disclosure. I don't understand YouTube. (laughs) I am going to add YouTube to this list of episodes because we don't have things about StreamYard or YouTube on this list. So we're going to talk about YouTube in some depth at some point um, on our own show. Mm -hmm. Um, But I see this tweak of the week that says super thanks on YouTube. And I have no earthly idea what that's about. Okay. So this is for people who are monetized. To get monetized on YouTube, you need a thousand subscribers and 4,000 watch hours within a year uh, to be able to be monetized. And then you start enabling all these different features of monetization, such as showing ads on your show, uh, being able to do super chat during your live streams. There's this new thing that they've enabled for everybody who's monetized that you can enable, and it's called super thanks. If you go back and look at some of our old videos on our monetized channel, which is messages and methods, you will see a little heart uh, just below the screen. Uh, that's got a dollar sign in it and it says thanks next to it. If you click on that, you can donate to our channel. Uh, This is another way that's like Super Chat, but it's for videos that have already gone up that people really enjoy. If you like a series that somebody's put out, you want to donate to their channel, you think they're a great creator and you want, you know, give them that extra boost, (laughs) you can write a really nice comment and give them some money and it will, you know, like, be a celebration kind of a thing for uh appearing on the screen and it's it's really cool 
I think that's amazing. I'm giggling because yeah. I just think that's so neat. Yeah. And um, one of the features that we have now with me and my my installation of Outpost is the ability to take donations, but it's nothing as slick as Super Thanks, where it's just included in YouTube. And I need to I need to I need to go back to some of these other older videos that you have where you can you know with the super thanks and things like that and i keep meaning to tune in on saturdays so i can you know see every <laughs> see the super chat and everything um firsthand so um definitely encouraging everybody to uh tune in on saturdays um and and see messages and methods and you know it's actually called news and views on saturday news night. and views on saturday sorry you've got like a hundred okay. shows it's very know, hard for me I to know. keep track of we them. try we try to keep the two separate because news and views <laughs> is talking about the news and our views okay. on the news and messages and, and methods is about content marketing so two different things <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> so do you want to close us out with the inspirational nugget you betcha <laughs> magical <laughs> this is something that i got out of the daily stoic so i want to share it with you kindness is invincible but only when it's sincere with no hypocrisy or faking for what can even the most malicious person do if you keep showing kindness what if the next time you were treated meanly you didn't just restrain yourself from fighting back what if you responded with unmitigated kindness what if you could love your enemies do good to those who hate you what kind of effect do you think that would have? I recently, in a blog post or a newsletter, I wrote about uh, people having fear of go doing a YouTube show or whatever, putting it out there, and then having people say mean things to them. Yeah. And I explained that very often people do that because they're hurting. And they hurt people hurt people, right? So they'll go rah, 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 in your comments. And if you could look at the comment, take a step back, take a breath and go, this is not about me. This is not about my content. This is about what's going on with that person. They're having a bad day. They're feeling angry. They're feeling sad. They're feeling hurt. What can I do to make them feel better, help them to have a better day, and then answer them from that point of view. And uh, you might actually get a new viewer, a new friend out of that conversation because you reached out with kindness and you helped instead of just being upset and, and angry. Absolutely. You know, haters, haters are going to hate. <laughs> there's one guy, there's one, I say guy, I don't know, one person who every time I post a video on YouTube dislikes it. I mean, it's like almost instantaneously. <laughs> It's not funny. Like, this is funny. This is like yeah. it, it's you're taking time out of your day mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just to dislike something yeah. that it's unlikely they've even paid attention to. But, you know, it's and it's like at first I was hurt by it. You know, I don't know who it is. I don't it doesn't matter. And and now I just think it's kind of funny. And mm -hmm. when we talk about these comments, you know, it can happen on your posts, your Facebook, your um, Google business profile, it can happen on YouTube. Always reply with kindness yeah. and a helpful, a helpful bet. And when you reply with kindness, people don't know what to do. That's true. <laughs> they're, ex they're expecting a fight. Mm -hmm. And we don't offer the fight. It, it really, it might infuriate that person, but a lot of other people who see it it makes you more endearing if it comes from a place of love. That's right. It's it's a good example for others to follow as well. They'll see yeah. that you're being kind and uh, they'll say, that's a good example. I'm going to do that myself next time. So, yeah. Absolutely. So oh, yeah. share kindness. Kindness is invisible. And thank you so much for watching and listening. And uh, I won't see you next week, but Toby and Shelly will. That's right. We'll be here next week. Please join us to learn about home studios and have a wonderful week yourself. Yeah. Thank you for joining the Women Conquer Business podcast hosted by Shelley Carney and Jen McFarland. Please subscribe and leave a comment or question regarding your most challenging content creation or business problem. Then share this podcast with family and friends so they can find the support they need to expand their brand and share their message with the world. 
Check the show notes for links to valuable resources and come back again next week.